welcome back. We are here in the second video for the audio portion of this project. In the last video, we got our sound effects set up and we got our music beds imported. And in this video, we're going to set up our music beds. So I'm going to go ahead and close up that. The first thing I'm going to do is create yet another function that is going to allow us to fade the music out. It makes it much easier when we put it all in a function because we won't have to go find the events and the actions. We'll actually just call the function and then we can enter the information we want very easily. And I'll show you how that works. So let's go over to the functions event sheet and I'm going to close up our grunt sound effect. Right click and add a group. And I'm going to call this fade music. And then I'm going to right click again and add a function. And I'm going to call this function fade music. All right. And I'll slide that up into the group. So I want to be able to tell the function each time we use it, which audio track I want to fade. And to be able to do that, we'll create some variables inside the function itself, which are called parameters. Right click on the function itself and say add parameter. And I'll call this first one uh, track name. And make sure that we change the type to string because we're going to type in the tag name of each music file that we're trying to access uh, directly. So make sure this is a string. Hit OK. And let's right click on the function again and add another parameter. And we'll call this one fade duration. And that's going to be a number. So for our function to know when music is playing, I'm going to set this up to check what our status is as far as the mute level or the volume level, which is either muted or playing at full. So I'm going to run a check for that mute volume variable that we created a while back. Highlight this entire function and press B on the keyboard. It'll give us a blank sub event and then we can double click it to go in. Let's select system and I want to compare a variable and that variable is going to be mute volume. And when it is equal to zero, which means false, we set it up as a one for true, zero for false. So when it is not muted, that means the volume is at full, then we can fade it out when we call this function. So let's add an action to our mute volume check. Go into our input, grab the audio object, and our very first option here should be fade volume. That's the one I want. This is where we would set the name of the audio file itself. So if we wanted to fade out level completed, and that's what we named it, then we would put level completed in between quotation marks here. But I want the function to read a different file each time we use the function. So we're going to use the variable we created, track name. So we can delete these quotation marks and just start typing in the name of the variable, which is track name. And then for the decibel level, I'm going to say minus 200. And then the duration, we have the option to change how long it takes to fade the music out because we set up this fade duration variable. So I'm going to type that in, fade duration. And then on end, I want it to stop. We can hit done on that. So we set it up for if the mute volume is zero, meaning that we can hear audio. But we also set up the mute feature a few videos back. So we know that it can be at mute volume equals one. But instead of checking for that specifically, I'm going to just check for anything other than mute volume equals zero. Highlight this function, this block up here, that'll highlight all of it. Hit B on the keyboard and we get another blank sub event. Double click to go into it, go system and type in else. And then we can go add an action, go into our input, grab the audio, stop all. If the mute is set to true, then it'll just stop all music tracks that might be playing uh, in the background. So that is our fade music function. We are done with that. Now we can put it into play. 
Let's start with our title. Let's go to menu title event sheet. And I'm going to go up here to on start of layout. So as soon as the title screen is accessed, I want the title music to start playing. So let's add an action and go to input audio play. And this will be our title screen way down at the bottom. Now for the music beds, I do want them to loop. So if somebody's playing the game and they're on the title screen and they get distracted or they're doing something else, this music bed is only maybe one or two minutes long maybe. So once it gets through playing, it'll just loop back and play again. And we can preview what the file sounds like so we know uh, which file we have selected. So this is title screen. Nice little music bed there. It comes in pretty loud. So in my experience in, in playing around with this before, uh, I went with minus 10 for the volume. And for our music beds to be able to fade out, we're going to have to access them through their tag. In between quotation marks, I'm just going to give it a tag. Uh, I'll call it title and hit done. And then down here in our buttons group, when we hit play, it is going to take us to the map. But we also take half a second to fade out. So I also want to fade out the title music along with the screen. So here we can start using our function. So let's add an action, go to functions, and pick our fade music. Hit next, and here's our parameters that we created. So the track name is going to go in between quotation marks and we're going to use that title tag. So type in title in between quotations and then the fade duration, I'm going to set it at the same time limit as the fade out function. So uh, 0.5, that'll take half a second. So what it is going to do is, let's actually let's slide this up underneath the other function. Once we hit the play button, it will set our touch active it will start fading the screen out and the music, and it'll access this tag, which we set uh, up here. We set the tag to title. So it'll access that, and it'll fade that track out to negative 200 is what we had it set at over the course of half a second. And then we'll wait half a second for all that to take place, and then it'll send us to the map. So that's how that is going to work each time we set it up. However, on the title screen, if we hit quit, or we use the back button that we set up for uh, if it's being played on a mobile device that has a back button. We close out of the browser. So just to make sure that the music isn't playing once we quit the game, let's go ahead and set up an action for that. So add an action, go to our input, our audio, and just say stop all. That will ensure us that all music, all sounds, everything will be stopped. With that highlighted, I'm going to hold control on the keyboard, click and drag out a copy. And actually those can go above before, just to make sure that the audio gets stopped. Okay, that sets up our title screen. Let's go to our menu next event sheet. As soon as we get to our next menu, I want its own music to start playing. So let's add an action. Input, audio, play. When we're on menu next, that means that we just beat the level. So that is level completed. And we can test that out. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> that is the intro music that I have put to every video in this series. We also want this to loop. So change that to looping. I'm going to set mine at negative eight. I felt like it was a little loud when I tested it out myself. And then the tag uh, in quotation marks, I'm gonna just call this one uh, completed. Make sure that you have quotation marks around your tag and that you know uh, exactly what your tag is and how it's spelled. Because we're going to need to access it uh, specifically to this. Okay, hit done. I'm going to slide that all the way to the top. So our only option when we are on the menu next screen is we have a next button. 
and that next button, when you press it, it fades out and goes to the map. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the title. Whenever it starts fading out, we're also going to fade the music so that it's not playing when we go into the map. So add an action, functions, get our fade music function, and that track name is going to be completed in between quotation marks and our fade duration since we have the fade out time for the screen at half a second I'm going to do the same thing here 0 0.5 and we can slide it up underneath that other function so we will fade the screen out fade the music out we'll wait half a second for all that to take place and then it'll send us to the map so let's go to menu retry next so this menu this screen has its own music we can do as we have been doing add an action go to input audio play and this is going to be our level failed and we can play that also sound familiar uh, in some of the videos when I've had to speed up the action on the screen I use that particular music bed to back that up and I'm going to set this one to looping as well and the volume I'm going to bring it down negative uh, 8 I'm just going to call this one retry because it is on the retry menu okay and I'm actually going to slide this up uh, up one so after the function starts to fade in then we can start playing the audio as it's fading in in our retry button we have two options we can either retry the level that we're on or we can quit so let's take care of the retry first let's go get that function again so add action functions fade music and that track name the tag we made was retry and the fade duration is going to be 0 0.5 it's gonna fade with how we set it up for the screen to fade I'll slide that up underneath it we actually have something else to add here and I'll get to that in just a second let's take care of button quick first so let's do the same thing here let's add an action get our function fade music and we want that same one so retry in between quotations and the fade duration will be 0 0.5 and I'll slide it up under our fade out function and this will do the same thing when we hit the quit button it will take half a second to fade these two out it'll wait a one full second and go back to the map so on our button retry when we get to the map which we'll do next when we select a level I have a sound effect that plays that indicates that we have started the level and we'll be able to access that in the map when we select a level however when we hit the button retry we're really doing the same thing we're selecting whatever value this current layout is holding which is whatever level we were just on we're replaying it now so I want that sound effect to play here as well so let's add an action input audio play and that's going to be level selected and this is what it sounds like pretty cool okay uh, this is going to be not looping this is only going to play once and I am going to knock that down to minus 8 might be a little loud and in between quotations I'm gonna set the tag to uh, let's just call it selected okay hit done and I'm gonna slide that up under the two functions here because I want it to play as soon as we click the button I want all this to start taking place and I want that new track to play signifying that we have selected a level and then it'll wait one second and then go to that layout but this lasts more than one second so it'll start playing wait a second go to the next layout and it'll still be finishing up that sound and we'll work on the timing a little bit later that is it for the retry I'm going to close that up now let's go over to our map event sheet and in our initialize map group stretch that out there I'm gonna do what we've been doing let's add an action in our on start of layout event add an action input audio play and this one is called map 
nice and soothing, pretty subtle. Uh, let's change that to looping. And the volume for this one, I'm going to set mine at negative six. And the tag in between quotation marks, I'm going to just say map. Hit done. I'm going to slide that up to, uh, I guess, just the second action that takes place there. So if we go down here to button quit group and open that up, whenever we quit out of the map, it sends us back to the title screen. And we have a fade out time of half a second here, so we might as well fade the map music out as well. Add an action, function, fade music, and grab our map tag, and the fade duration will be 0 0.5. And I'll slide it up under our other function here. We'll wait five seconds for that to take place, and it'll send us back to the title screen. Down here in our map level, this is where we tap on the level object and it sends us to that level. And we have this function set up that says go to level. Now we could go through all of these and make sure that each time we press on each individual level, we fade the music out. Or we could just put it inside this function and we'll only have to do it once. So let's go over to our functions tab and in our go to level group, we have this function set up to send us to whatever level we just tapped on. And I'll add an action, go to our functions, fade music, and in our quotations, I will access that map tag again, and the fade duration will be 0 0.5. Now here is what I was talking about earlier, is I want that level selected tone to play when we go into a level. And we did that with retry because that sends us into another level. So in our go to level function, we can go ahead and start playing that tone here as well. So let's add an action, input, audio, play. And that is level selected, not looping. And the volume, I believe we set that at minus eight, or I did anyways. And we don't need a tag because we don't need to access it to fade it out or anything. So that should play that tone every time we go into a level. I'm going to hit done. And that wraps that part up. If we go into our function start level group, and if we go all the way to the bottom, this last block of code here, it's pretty big. I'm going to add an action and go to our input audio play and I want level play. And this is what it sounds like. So that is the music that plays while the player is playing the level. And that is going to be looping because you never know how long it takes to get through a level. And the volume, this one for me, I'm gonna put it negative eight and I'm gonna give it a tag of play in between quotation marks. Okay, I'm going to slide this up under our create object text run. So the timing of this is all this stuff starts to take place. We fade in, we zoom, the ready flashes on the screen, I think like three or so times, and then the HUD slides in. We wait a couple seconds for all this stuff to, to finish its animation out. We destroy the text, we create the text called run, which when it flashes on screen, that indicates that, hey, it's time to go. So that's when I want this audio to start playing. However, if we go and let's preview the project and we can kind of test some of this other stuff out. There's our title music. There's our sound effects. I hit play. Did you hear that? It faded out along with the screen fading out. And it, like, if I go push quit, it'll take us back to the title and it should fade the map music out as well. And it does. It's subtle, it's quick, but uh, it's way better than a jarring stop to a full blast music. So I'll go back in and let's see what happens when I go into the level. So uh, you can tell that they overlap each other 
the the audio overlaps the level selected audio overlaps the level playing audio that's what I'm trying to say so I don't want that I want it to wait a little bit and if we exit out of that uh, let's work on the timing here let's see we come in to the level all this stuff takes place in less than the blink of an eye then we start creating the camera object we deactivate our controls the animation and the pause and then we call for the screen to fade in so before the screen fades in I want it to sit in blackness uh, just a little bit longer before it starts fading in and if we put a wait up here it'll wait then do all of this after that so I'm gonna add an action system wait and I'm going to say two seconds, 2.0. Okay, and then I will slide this up to right above the fade in time. So I'll get to this point and it'll sit in blackness for two more seconds before it starts fading in and then running the rest of this code. Let's see what that sounds like. We might need to adjust this. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, not bad. I think maybe uh, two seconds was just slightly too fast. So I'm gonna say three seconds. I'm gonna test this out one more time. And let's see. I like it. I think it's timed out pretty good. Okay, so we should be good here in this function. I'm going to close that up. I'm going to close our map, just kind of clean up a little here. I don't need retry or next or title. I'm going to open up our controls event sheet and in our player death, once we have died on the level, we obviously don't want the music to play anymore. So we can use the same function here. Let's add an action, functions, fade music, and that will be our level, what do we call that, play? We need to access that same tag, and I'm gonna say 0 0.5, and I want that to happen pretty quick in the process, so I'll slide it up to just under when we play the death sound effect then we can immediately start fading the music out and by the time the death sound effect plays out uh, you won't even know that the music faded out I'm going to close that up and I'm going to open up our objects event sheet and in our diamond group once we collect the diamond the level has been completed so we can go ahead and fade the music out there as well Actually, I'm not going to fade it out here because I know that I ran into some issues when I tested this out. It's been a while, but for some reason that I can't remember at the moment, I ended up putting it on the main event sheet. In our objects, we checked, or actually we set the variable level passed to true, which is one. So I want to know when level passed is equal to one. So I'll add an event, go to system, I'm going to compare a variable, and that is going to be level passed. When it is equal to one, which means it's true, we've passed the level, then in our main event sheet, we will run that function. And let's go to fade music, and that will be the level play and the duration we can do 0 0.5. I'm going to close that up. While we're still here in the main event sheet, I'm going to go into the pause group. So when we pause the game, I want the music to still be heard, but I want it to kind of drop in volume while it's paused. We have our time scale equals zero, which means that we are paused time scale equals one, which is our else statement down here, means that the game is at full speed. So when we are paused, 
I want to lower the audio. So let's add an action. Let's go into our input, grab our audio object, and I want to set volume. Get the tag name of our play tag. And I'm going to set the decibel level to minus 18 worked out for me. So I'll hit done and I'm going to leave it right there. I think that's a good spot for it. And then when we're not paused, I want it to go back to where we had it set in our functions. There it is at negative eight is its normal volume that I have it set up as. So back over here, I'm going to take this action right here where we just lowered the volume, highlight it, control click and drag out a copy to the bottom of this else statement. Because once we lower the volume up here, when we unpause it down here, we want it to go back to its normal volume, which if we double click and go into this, we can just set it back to minus eight or whatever your normal volume for level play music bed is. I think that should cover all of our music beds. So let's do a little testing. I'm going to start from the beginning, preview the project. Our title music is playing. We fade out. Our map music is playing. I like the, the volume level so far myself. I will go into a level. Timing looks pretty good. And now we can compare our sound effects and the music together. Because the sound effects don't sound near as loud now that we have music playing. Alright. Everything sounds good so far. I'm going to make sure that our level complete when we collect the diamond plays. There we go. So the fade out of the music there was very subtle and before it faded all the way out it changed scenes to our next menu. So there, there wasn't a lot of time to hear the effects of that but it does actually fade it uh, right before we get sent to the next menu so I'm gonna hit next we fade out uh, looks like we, we've unlocked level 2 and I'm gonna go back into level 1 and I'm gonna check out when we die And we're not fading. Okay. Uh, let's take care of that in our controls in player death. Okay, so while we're still here in the main event sheet, I'm going to go into the pause group. And I'll stretch this out a little. I don't know if you have this same problem, but irritates me that it does not save your preferences but that's okay so when we pause the game I want the music to still be heard but I want it to uh, kind of reflect what you're seeing on the screen where we kind of darken it just a little and then we blur it just a little and I want the music to just kind of drop in volume while it's paused that'll let the player know even more that uh, you know you're you're out of the game you have stopped the play of the game so let's go into the pause and we have our time scale equals zero which means that uh, we are paused and uh, time scale equals one which is our else statement down here uh, means that the game is at full speed. So when we are paused, I want to lower the audio. So let's add an action. And let's go into our input, grab our audio object. 
and I want to set volume. And we will get the tag name of our play tag. And I'm going to set the decibel level to minus 18 worked out for me. So I'll hit done. And I'm going to leave it right there. I think that's a good spot for it. And then when we're not paused, I want it to go back to where we had it set. So uh, in our functions, what we set level play, there it is, at negative 8 is its normal volume that I have it set up as. So back over here, I'm going to take this action right here where we just lowered the volume, highlight it, control click and drag out a copy to the bottom of this else statement. Because once we lower the volume up here, when we unpause it down here, we want it to go back to its normal volume, which if we double click and go into this, we can just set it back to minus eight or whatever your normal volume for level play music bed is. Okay. I think that should cover all of our music beds. So let's do a little testing. I'm going to start from the beginning, preview the project. Our title music is playing. We fade out. Our map music is playing. I like the, the volume level so far myself. I will go into a level. Timing looks pretty good. And now we can compare our sound effects and the music together. Because the sound effects don't sound near as loud now that we have music playing. Alright. Everything sounds good so far. I'm going to make sure that our level complete when we collect the diamond plays. There we go. So the fade out of the music there was very subtle and before it faded all the way out it changed scenes to our next menu. So there, there wasn't a lot of time to hear the effects of that but it does actually fade it uh, right before we get sent to the next menu. So I'm gonna hit next. We fade out. Uh, looks like we, we've unlocked level 2 and I'm gonna go back into level 1 and I'm gonna check out when we die. And we're not fading. Okay, uh, let's take care of that. This is kind of hard to spot. So what's happening over here on our main event sheet in the pause, we are saying while the time scale is equal to zero, meaning that it's paused, we set the volume of that audio file to uh, this negative 18, or at least that's what I put it at. Otherwise, we set it to the negative 8, which is what we set it at over here in our function. So even if we die and we run it and we try to fade it over on our main, our time scale is not 0 because we're not paused. We just died in the game. Our time scale is still at full speed which would be this else statement, and we're telling it to keep playing at negative eight decibels. So it's overriding, essentially, what's happening over here. It's kind of a good thing also because we need to deactivate this whole pause group, just like we did over here in functions. We deactivated the pause group here, and then we reactivated it when we wanted to start playing. So in our death group here in our controls event sheet 
we need to deactivate that pause group once again. Let's add an action, go into system. I'm going to start typing in group. We want to set group active and that's going to be the pause group and change this to deactivated. Hit done. And I'm actually going to slide that up before our uh, two second wait here. So highlight that and slide it up before this two second wait. We should be able to fade that music out. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to go over to my level one tab and I'll zoom in down here and make sure your player layer is unlocked if you want to do this. And I'm just going to move our spawner a little bit closer so we don't have to wait as long to test this out. Let's go ahead and preview the project. Right. There we go. It fades out and then this is able to play afterwards. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. And I bet you that is my issue over here as well. So I tell you what we're going to do with the diamond. Instead of having this whole event over here, I'm actually going to just highlight the action by itself and I'm going to hold control C on the keyboard to copy and come over here in our objects and in our diamond and I'm going to place it uh, up here. I'm going to have it right after our success chime is triggered. So I'm going to say control V and that's going to call that function, that fade music function when we collect the diamond. So back on our main, we don't need this anymore. I'm going to highlight that, delete it. See, I figure this out as I'm making the tutorial. <laughs> it usually doesn't happen that way. We still need to deactivate the pause. Let's add an action, system. I'm going to type in group, set group active, and in, uh, in quotations, I'm going to say pause and deactivated. Hit done. And let's slide that up where we deactivate these other groups just like we did over here in our, uh, our uh, start function. Okay, so I think that's going to work that way. Let's go into our level one tab and I'm going to slide our player spawner all the way to the top and we can preview the project. The reason I'm previewing the project from the beginning is so that all the music starts playing in order. If I start just on level one, it won't play the intro sound. And that's fine, but I'm just trying to get the whole effect so that each time we're testing it, we're just testing over and over and over again, making sure that everything works. All right, and we win. Perfect. Okay, that works. I figured something out today. Great. Okay, I'm going to move my player spawner all the way back down to his original starting position. And, oh, we didn't test the pause yet. I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I mean by if we just preview level one, this whole intro music doesn't play because it's in a different part of the code. But our level music should still play. So, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna hit pause. And it quiets the music while we're paused. And if I unpause, it goes back up. Pause it. Now I'll use play. There we go. Now I'm going to pause and did we set this up? I'm going to hit quit. No, we did not. Okay. Glad we did that. Over in our main, in our pause, whenever we hit the quit button, we need to make sure that we are fading the music out. So let's add an action to this event here where we press the quit button in our pause menu. So add an action and let's call that function fade music and that tag is play and the duration we'll set at 0.5. And I know we've been setting the duration to 0.5 in all of these, but setting that up gives us the opportunity to set it at a different speed of fading the music out. Okay, I'm gonna slide this fade music function to the top of this whole block, and let's test this out again.
Alright, I'll pause. And I will quit out of it. Okay, so it does fade the music out over half a second, but what is happening is it's taking half a second to fade, but we're also immediately doing the rest of this. So by the time the map comes up, this is still fading out. If we start putting wait times in here, it's going to start messing things up. I'm just going to try this out real quick. Uh, wait, let's say 0 0.5, and do that before we set the time scale back and go to the map. And actually, you can't because right now the time scale is zero, so waiting half a second would do nothing. This would have to happen after we set the time scale back to full speed. But once we set the time scale back to full speed, if we wait half a second for this fade out to play out, then that's half a second that the game will be unpaused and then it'll take us back to the map. And we don't want that to show that way. Here, I'll show you what I am talking about. So if I pause and then I quit, we set the time scale back and it, uh, it, it messes a lot of things up. So without this wait, we are still fading the music. It's just as it's fading out, the map is being called up. And it's not a full half a second, but to me it sounds better than the jarring switch from full blast to nothing. I think sometimes we just have to find some corners to cut to make things work in our favor. Okay, that, I believe, wraps it up for our music and sound effects. I'm going to close some of these up. We covered everything except for the one sound effect that we will get to in a later video. That wraps it up for the audio portion of our project here. In the next video, we are going to get into creating a save system. So until then, we are done here. I will see you in the next one, and don't forget to save.